Brothers and sisters, we've gone up into the hills above Berkeley. We're in the wondrous Berkeley Rose Garden. This is an amphitheater here filled with roses. You would hardly think so, but there is a severe drought here in California. When you consider that California produces 40% of all the organic food grown in the U.S., it seems that food shortages and disruptions are on the way. The price of food has nowhere to go but up. The unrestrained printing of money is leading to hyperinflation, which will be inevitably followed by a chain reaction of bankruptcies and then a crash. A crisis is at hand. We say, hug the earth. Emulate the greatest generation. Plant a victory garden, as they did after Pearl Harbor. By May 1943, there were 18 million victory gardens in the United States, 12 million in cities, and 6 million on farms. In that year, these backyard gardens produced 40% of all the vegetables consumed in the U.S. Eleanor Roosevelt instituted a victory garden on the White House lawn. Winter is approaching. We say plant hardy vegetables that will make it in that will make it through in many parts of the United States. Imagine the abundance of salad greens you'll rejoice in come early spring. So let's start with lettuce, of course. We plant lettuce because 140 million Americans, think of it, 140 million Americans are obese. The American Obesity Association suggests that in just four years, 50% of Americans will be obese and predicts this will jump to 60% by 2030. By 2030. So let's begin. Let's begin with winter density lettuce, a magnificent romaine, a standby you just can't go wrong with. These seeds are from pine tree garden seeds wonderful folks in the in the state of Maine. So we planted some winter density lettuce. And uh, here's an image of what it looks like. And then from there, we're going to go on to Rouge de Vire. In other words, red winter lettuce, as you've guessed, is from France. Another standby, you just can't go wrong with this. Rouge de Vire lettuce. And then after that, we're going to be planting a, uh, a Jericho lettuce. This is a, uh, another wonderful, vigorous romaine. It's from Israel, Jericho lettuce. And then we're planting um, a green oak leaf lettuce. Doesn't that look appealing? Green oak leaf. Here we go. And this, by the way, is from Seed Savers Exchange. Wonderful people in the Midwest doing righteous work, saving rare and heirloom varieties of seed.
So that pretty much, that pretty much completes our lettuce planting with four wonderful varieties. And now we're going to be planting kale. We're going to be planting kale because ultra processed foods make up 60% of the American diet. So our reply with that is white Russian kale, right, white Russian kale from Johnny's Selected Seeds, another wonderful seed company in Maine. White Russian kale. Okay. And then we're going to be planting a truly <laughs> incredible uh, plant. This is called thousand-headed kale. Can, can you make out the size of each leaf? They're phenomenal. So thousand-headed kale from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, another company in the Midwest that's doing righteous work for preserving heirloom and rare varieties. helping us all maintain our heritage. And then of course, dwarf Siberian kale. This, you can be sure, will make it through winter in most parts of the, uh, of the states. Dwarf Siberian kale, another Russian kale. And then we're going to go on. We're going to be planting chard because the rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide are currently at an all-time high. Not surprisingly, though. So we're going to be planting Bloomsdale, Bloomsdale spinach, uh, a magnificent a magnificent standby has been around for decades. So Bloomsdale spinach. Our reply to anxiety, fear, and depression. And we're going to be planting also um, Another variety of spinach called America. And now, ah, here, here we go. And now a, um, a golden a golden Swiss chard from, uh, from a company called Seed Dreams. Wonderful name. So this is golden Swiss chard. And now we're going to go on. We're going to go on to, um, we're going to be planting some col collard greens. And we're planting collard greens because they're just a hardy, robust, overwintering vegetable. Um, look at the vibrancy of that leaf. So we're planting uh, collard greens. And this is, this is a, a Morris heading collard and we're going to be planting uh, another collard uh, a standby called uh, Vats Collard Greens this is from Baker Creek so let's do that hmm. 
And finally, we're going to be planting some, uh, some mustard greens. This is a magnificent Japanese giant red mustard. Truly magnificent plant. So, Japanese gi giant red mustard. Mm -hmm. And we're going to finish up by planting some um, some Italian parsley. Always, it takes three weeks to germinate, but it always comes through. Okay. And we planted the mustard greens because the birth rate has been declining steadily in the United States since the Wall Street crash of 2008 and the subsequent recession, whereas in previous crises, including the Great De Depression, there was a fall in the birth rate, but it came right back up after a few years. But it seems that there has been no such rebound since 2008. The birth rate is falling. And we've planted our spinach because, because diabetes has reached epidemic, ec, epidemic proportions worldwide. One third of Americans, 115 million Americans, were either pre-diabetic or diabetic. So we plant. We plant because the life expectancy in the U.S. has declined over the past three years. Tragically enough, this troubling decline is largely driven by deaths from drug, drug overdose and suicide. We plant because of a deeper, more profound illness an affliction of the soul, a disease of the spirit that manifests in, in fear and anxiety. And I know, I'm fully aware that most of you live in apartments. So what do you do? You have no garden readily available. Well, you get a flat of potting soil You'll get the pot, you, you'll, you'll get a, you, you'll, you'll buy the plastic flat and the, a bag of potting soil from your local nursery. And what are you going to do? But you're going to be planting arugula in the privacy of your kitchen. Arugula is a powerful, it's a uh, member of the mustard family and it's a powerful germ germinator. And I'm just spreading this out over the flat uniformly. And it's end. When I get home, of course, I'm going to water all of these flats and I'm going to sp put a damp towel, damp paper towel, over each of these trays. And every morning and every evening, I'll take the towel up, I'll water, and put the towel back on again. And sure enough, within days, they'll start to germinate. After a week or so, as far as the arugula, this is what you're going to have. Imagine these magnificent, magnificent arugula sprouts. Imagine this on a counter in your kitchen, facing a south, uh, facing a south, a south facing window, but of course, and there are other magnificent things that you can do, like you can plant. These are, um, are barley sprouts that I've planted from barley that I've germinated. 
And imagine a clump of this in your green smoothie. That would certainly get, your, get you going and vitalize you as much as you could possibly wish. Barley sprouts. The same with wheatgrass sprouts. So these are all possibilities, brothers and sisters. We say, don't hesitate, but start that victory garden. Join a community garden. Every schoolyard, an edible schoolyard. Every public park, every public park, an edible landscape. Let's go forward with abundance. Let's build here a garden for the American spirit. Thank you. It's been a privilege to share with you.